All right, I feel, I just feel so confident about this review. You know, after the last review, um, I was I was captured by the collector and I was up shit creek without a paddle, but now I feel super strong because I have my Myers shirt. Myers always protects me. I feel good about this. I'm not even scared anymore. Here we go. Oh no, not again. Are you kidding me? Uh, oh God, what the, what the hell is going on? At least I'm not strapped down. What happened to the lights though? Jesus. Oh God. I'm gonna be okay, I'm gonna be okay. Oh God, the lights came back on. Whew. That's okay, cause I got my Myers shirt and things are... Oh shit, I am royally fucked. The collection stars Josh Stewart, Emma Fitzpatrick, and is directed by Marcus Dunkston. What's up guys, it's time to review the collection. I am so like on a collector high. I recently reviewed the collector. Uh, that movie was awesome. I'd seen it before, but I hadn't seen it in a while. I was glad I uh, watched it again and reviewed it. But uh, I really wanted to get to the collection really quick. So what I did was I posted a poll and I wanted to do a part two of something, and I'm due for Final Destination 2. I'm also due for Dario Argento's Inferno, the follow-up to Suspiria, and uh, of course, the collection. So I posted a poll on Killer Flicks and on Twitter. The funny thing is on Twitter, uh, Final Destination 2 and the collection tied at 41%. But luckily, the guys at Killer Flicks gave me a clear winner, which was the collection. But Final Destination 2 was damn close. As a matter of fact, it was in the lead quite a few times. So that one's gonna be probably my next review. But uh, you know, I love getting my subscribers involved in what I review because obviously I wanna review what you guys want me to review. But I also wanna review what I wanna review. So I've said review way too many times. I'm drinking a monster right now, so I'm kinda pumped up. And I just finished the collection. This movie is freaking balls to the wall, like crazy. If, um, I'm just gonna keep talking even though I got this in my hand. Um, I think sequels, when they followed that tried and true formula of say terminator 2 and aliens where you just go bigger i think that it's like the safe route because that's what the collection does the collection feels bigger than the collector it even feels shinier if that makes sense it's like when you buy like say a camera on amazon and then you scroll down and you see a camera with like 10 accessories with it that's kind of what the collection is. It's the collector with 10 accessories. But this one picks up shortly after the events of the collector. We see our main character, Elena. She goes to this nightclub with her friend and right away, things seem kind of suspicious. Even the doorman is really creepy. And then when she gets in there, it's just like any other nightclub. But then quickly we see that this is the haven of the collector. And right away, you know that everybody is going to be up shit creek. But I love this scene, too. It really gets you into the vibe of the movie. It's fun. I love the music. Everything about it just really gets you pumped up. And boy, do they start off with a bang because the first kill reminded me of Ghost Ship a little bit. Um, but you got this, like, what I guess I would call a human grater, like a giant grater. It comes through and it just cleans house. Pretty much kills everybody in one fell swoop. And of course, right after that, we see the box and Arkin, played by Josh Stewart, is in that box. And this is him from the events of the first one. So he's, he pours out of the box, he runs, he jumps out of the window like anybody probably would. He's out of his mind. And when he gets to the hospital, this, uh, this team, they want to go in and they want to find the collector. The collector has made news. He's, he's not a good guy at all. He, and they want to go in and get this guy. And so they want to use Arkin to find this guy. And of course, once they get in there, they have no clue what they're dealing with. And just a little segue here, just to talk about the collector himself as a character. This might be like icon status. This might be like my favorite horror icon or horror character in a long time. After seeing this movie, like, I want a collector franchise. Now, give me five of these movies. Because I think he is just so cool. He's really mysterious, which you want to give your uh, horror killer some mystery about him. And he definitely has that. And you can tell there's, like, some like some sniper training. You can tell that uh, he's got some major hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. This guy has a history that we still don't know about yet. They haven't even scratched the surface. They give you a little bit. But uh, there's so much more to him that we don't know. 
and I like that they did that in the collection. They didn't pretty much give you everything. But also we have this wild card. Uh, uh, there's another box and there's this blonde girl that pours out of it. And right away, we don't really feel that comfortable about her. Something feels off. And really, this is a plot device to throw the viewer on edge, uh, on tilt a bit, uh, to make the viewer not feel really safe about what's going on. Because you, you have this threat of the collector, but then you got this other character that you have no idea about. And they're probably unhinged in the head anyway. And that is kind of a brief step into the cons because let's face it she was pretty damn predictable right away I was like oh no I don't I don't trust her at all get her out of here now this is a collector movie that pretty much has the the female leading the pack Elena she is the one that's fending for her life trying to get away from the danger whereas in the first one it was it was Arkin mostly of course Arkin's still dealing with the same stuff but he knows more about what he's dealing with in this one whereas in the first one he didn't really know what the hell was going on so at least he's there to to help these other guys that are hunting the collector and let them know that, hey, this guy's not like your normal guy. He's gonna really screw your world up. And of course he does. This movie is carnage candy. There's so much blood and guts. And that's really what you want in a collector movie. If you've seen the first one, which you probably have if you've seen this one, then you know that these movies are about, I don't wanna say torture, even though there's a lot of that in this, I'll go ahead and say it, torture. Yeah, they, these movies are about giving the viewer a, a punchline, I guess, for lack of a better term. And one thing I love about these is the booby traps. Uh, as the characters go through this movie, there's so many of these, these booby traps along the way, and they're so creative and they're so inventive. And one of my favorite ones involves, I guess, a modern day Iron Maiden. And anytime I can say the words Iron Maiden in a, in a review, that's just a bonus for me. So I got to say it in this review. There's an Iron Maiden and the scene's really cool. And the, the character that gets killed by the Iron Maiden, um, it, it was really nice to see. It was fun. And there's also one scene with spiders. I cannot freaking stand spiders. They scare the crap out of me. And uh, Elena, in one of the scenes, she's escaped the box. She's trying to get out. But then the collector releases these spiders. Uh, to help draw her out. You even have, I guess, this movie's version of zombies. They're not really zombies, but they're they're victims of the collector that he has drugged. And they are at a stage of just insanity. Really, this whole movie takes place in like a carnival funhouse. That's what it feels like. It feels like just a deranged carnival funhouse. Even though it's not supposed to be. Even though it's like a nightclub or a hotel. It's called the Argento Hotel, which Marcus Dunson is a big fan of Dario Argento, so that's like a wink to Dario Argento, which I thought was really cool too because I love Dario Argento. As a matter of fact, behind the scenes, when Marcus Dunson would uh, film a lot of the scenes, he would actually play music from other horror movies just to get the actors in, in the spirit, in the mode, uh, like uh, the music from Suspiria. I like directors that really just get invested in what's going on, try to get their actors uh, completely pumped up and ready to go in a scene. And Marcus Dunstan really does that in this movie. You can tell that he loves this franchise. I don't know if there's a third collector in the works. I'm hoping there is because this one was a lot of fun. It really was. Now, as far as any cons, there are a couple of segments of this movie that you might pick apart a bit. Uh, there's one section where there's like a hole in the wall that's like painfully obvious. And if the collector went through all this work to trap his victims, then why would he put this massive hole in the wall for them to scream out for help? I didn't really buy that part. And there is like uh, a section where the collector traps these, these people. Obviously he wants them dead. By this point in the movie, you know that he wants them dead. But instead he doesn't kill them. He, he lights a fuse that's gonna take like five, 10 minutes just to get to them. And then lights the fire at the end. And so it's one of those weak plot devices that gives our heroes a chance to get out of the danger when in real life they'd be dead in a heartbeat. But I do love the ending of this movie, how it sets up for another one. And it's really kind of unpredictable because this movie could go any direction after this. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. Please make a third movie. I'm definitely going to give this movie a high purchase worthy. I don't know if I like it better than the first one. I'd say they're about dead even, to be honest. But I will say, as far as like rewatchability goes, this one is definitely your movie. Because the first one, it's a hard watch. I think the first one's a little bit more sadistic, whereas this one just has a lot more fun going on. So anyway, guys, that's my review for the collection 
What are your thoughts on this movie? Looking forward to hearing them. Also, we did a Scream stream last night and it was our most successful that we've ever done. We almost got up to 100 viewers at one time. We were doing a commentary on A Nightmare on Elm Street and that probably helped quite a bit. But um, I think me, Cody, CP, and Brian, and we also had uh, Emily from Emily's Adventures in Horrorlands, five of us. And usually you're gonna have people talking over each other, but we all just had such a great rhythm with each other. And it was so much fun. It was really so much fun. So I can't wait to jump into another commentary. Uh, so post in the comments any suggestions that you think we should do for maybe the next one. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks, where we talk horror all day and every day on Fridays. We do Free For All Fridays. If you like what I'm doing, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Follow me at Drum Dums on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd, and now Stardust. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and Drum Dum out.